Hello everyone, welcome back to Cypher J's tier list. Today I am doing an updated Raven's Watch tier list. It's been a long time coming. Now, firstly, I apologize for how long it's taken me to get this done. Uh, at first I was kind of waiting to at least get one win with each character. And as you guys may or may not know, it took me a while to get a win with Aladdin. So there was that. And then since then I've kind of been procrastinating or having some sort of apprehension about it. But... I think it's good now. I feel pretty confident in where I put all the characters. But before I do that, I'm actually going to do a fan ranking. If you don't know, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, I ran some polls on the YouTube community tab and asked you guys what you think of each individual character ranked from S to D tier. Uh, so I'm going to go through those. I'm going to do just what the most common answer was for all of them. And we're just going to go in order of the characters. I'm not going to try to, you know, do C tier, B tier, A tier, S tier. I'm just going to go. So here we got Scarlet first. And that was in A tier. Pretty solidly in A tier, mind you. It says here 21% voted S tier, 44% A tier, 24% B tier, and the rest were in C and D. Negligible amounts of votes for C and D. Some of the common praises for her include the wolf's healing, uh, the crit builds that you can go with, and in terms of weaknesses, her just her early game. Some characters do struggle with early game. I think it's valid to say that Scarlet is one of them because she doesn't have any heals until the first night, which isn't too late into the game, but your first couple of en encounters or objectives can be kind of rough depending on what you're fighting. So up next we have the Pied Piper, and he is going firmly in the B tier. Uh, he did have a good amount of votes for S and A tier, equaling a total of 48% between the two of them, and then 50% in B tier. Uh, quite a high number there. Only a few voted for D tier and none for C tier, so I would say he's like firmly in the B A area. But I'm going to put him in B tier because that's where the majority was. And yeah, um, I can definitely see where people are coming from. He is pretty weak, especially early game, so understandable. Alright, and up next we got Beowulf. He, again, is firmly in A tier. 61% of people voted him for A tier. The next closest was S tier at 21%, so not even really close there. But between those two, the majority of his votes put him in S and A tier. I can definitely see this. He's a very safe character. I'm going to put him above Scarlet because it seems that he has more high tier votes. So let's move those guys over here. All right. Um, some common things is that he's very safe. Uh, all of his starting talents are pretty strong, uh, but he can't apply vulnerable is an another comment that someone made, which is a very good point. However, I will say in the new update, with the Ring of Dispel, you can apply Vulnerable with any character now. So I would say that is less of a concern for me personally. But I can definitely uh, I can definitely see that. And the, another comment said, easiest A tier. Not busted, but consistent. Fair. I think his safety allows him that. Then we had Snow Queen. Very good amount of votes in the top two tiers. Literally 94% of people said that she was either S or A tier. With S tier taking 53% of that. And so far, this is very similar to my initial tier list, where I put Snow Queen, Beowulf, and Mellow Sign in my S tier. Scarlet was in A tier, A or B tier, I believe. Pied Piper was definitely in B tier. So, I do sort of wonder, even though I did ask the general community, uh, I wonder if some of this is some influence from me. Either way, most of you guys said that she was either S or A tier. Very strong character. Her biggest weakness is that she's squishy, which is, you know, not an issue if you don't get hit. So, just don't get hit, forehead. Alright, and then next up in the roster, we have Aladdin. Aladdin gets a pretty solid A tier placement. I'm going to put him below Scarlet. Actually, I'll put him right above Scarlet. He seems to have a good number of S tier ratings, so I'll evaluate that there. Now, the biggest thing for Aladdin, coming from the previous update, is that he did get hit kind of hard with the nerfs. The Grimoire changes weren't super favorable for him. You'd rather have his passive. Uh, and for a while, I should get into this in my part, but it, for a while it felt like his E uh, was borderline useless for the trait charges uh, because you only get two choices. 
And so I would personally save it for the damage or the heals, mostly the damage. But, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people would have put him in S tier before the updates. A lot of people still did put him in S tier for this vote, but A tier took the majority, so that's where he will reside. Some people did put him a little lower, but not that many. Uh, two of the comments did say C tier, so in that response group, you know, there's some bigger representation there, but then the other two comments said A tier. And there's one thing that I agree with in here is that he does have a lot of bad talents, or talents that are like anti-synergistic, or talents that you need a couple of them to synergize to make either one of them good. So I can see all of that being valid. All right, and next up we have Melusign, and Melusign has a strong, very, very strong vote for S tier. And so strong that I'm gonna put her pretty firmly above Snow Queen. She got 70% of her votes for S tier, which is kind of crazy. And then another 25% in A tier, and the rest went to B, C, and D. All of the comments are either S or A tier, saying um, her healing can be insane, stuff like that. One comment said that she feels too stiff, because you stay still when you attack as her. And then another comment mentioned that her vulnerable isn't really useful, unless you upgrade it all the way and then the duration of the vulnerable does last longer. I think the new abilities that she got are actually extremely good and did probably help her placement for other people. Like I said, I already had Melusine in S tier, so those were just like a nice little cherry on top for me. Those being like Water Bubble and Enduring Wisp and stuff like that. Up next we have Geppetto, and he will be my second character in B tier. Now, I didn't really expect this when I started this pull. I thought there were a lot of Geppetto stands out there, and to be fair, he did get almost 50% of his votes in total in S and A tier, but the overwhelming amount was in B tier with 41%. So, I think not as bad as Pied Piper. Yeah, he had way more B tier votes. I'll put Pied Piper lower. But for the comments, there were a ton of comments for Geppetto. This is including my replies as well. One did say that Geppetto is insane, giving him a bunch of these stats that you can get, but my counter-argument to that was that you can get those stats on pretty much any character, and for some, it's easier, like Sun Wukong. Geppetto doesn't have any innate stat stacking, so I wouldn't say that's particularly one of his strengths, but I can see how if you enjoy Geppetto and you want to go for those items, they just make your experience better on Geppetto. A good number of the comments are just saying B tier. My friend Dane, he said D tier because it's a bit boring, <laughs> which I understand as well. One more comment said that they have a bias towards summoners and uh, that everything aside from his starting talents are really strong, which I can definitely get behind as well. Some of his starting talents aren't that great. I personally like Dummy Ball and Twin Dummies, but I think any of them are usable, to be fair. Now, up last, we have Sun Wukong. He got the most votes out of anyone with 88 votes, which is fair because I reposted the poll and said, hey guys, can you split up this vote here? It got stuck on, I think it was S and A tier, something like that. And it actually ended up dropping down to B tier with the most votes. I believe it was tied at like 30% for S and A tier. B was trailing behind, and then after I reposted it, B tier just shot up. Now, because S, A, and B tier are actually all so close together, and he does have, like, the second highest amount of votes that I got was for S tier, I think I'm actually going to put him in A tier. This is, will be the one character that I don't put them with their majority vote, just because I think it's not really fair to put a character in B tier when literally over 50% of their votes were for S and A tier and only 36 were for B tier. If it was like, I don't know, 50% for S and A, and then 50% for B tier, I'd definitely put him in B tier, but I'm gonna put him at the bottom of A tier because I think that's fair. Now, you can see no one got below a B tier, and honestly, not many characters, if any at all, got that many votes for anything below B tier. I think it's very fair that, you know, Honestly, any of these characters can be strong in their own situation, and oftentimes it's less about the character and more about the items that you get within the run, or just your luck in general. The game is a little RNG heavy, so it can be, it can feel like it's less the character's fault, but there are definitely times where it's like, yeah, I mean, like, this run is good because I'm playing X character, you know? So, overall, pretty cool tier list. 
pretty good distribution. You know, some outliers in the top tier, a pretty good pack in the middle, and then two outliers in the bottom. I think this does match pretty well, again, with my original tier list. Fair enough. I think I had some Wukong lower. I don't remember the exact orientation, but these two were definitely up there, and Beowulf was in the top three, which he is technically here as well. So, anyways... That'll be it for this section of the video. I'm going to switch over to my personal tier list, so I will be right back for that. All right, let's go. So I did take notes for this. I'm going to be reading off my notes uh, just because I wanted to have some coherent thoughts for my personal stances and try to explain myself better. Try to remember that, you know, this is subjective. This is my own personal feeling, and I have the videos to back it up, like, as to why I feel this way about any given character. I will be going from bottom to top, so without further ado, let's go with Aladdin. He will be my lowest rated character, and it will be a little harsher than the viewer tier list was because I just want to make a bigger distinction for the characters, and this is pretty genuinely how I feel. Aladdin in D tier, and I know he's a popular character for some reason or another, and I do admit this is really on me more than anything, but that's why it's a subjective tier list, but for some reason or another, Aladdin just doesn't click with me. I think I just don't have the patience to play as him. He feels like he's very uh, ability reliant, especially with your enchantment points, and if there's anything that I would change about Aladdin, it would be his enchantment points, whether it's, you know, a starting talent that makes them easier to get, or some sort of change such as you don't use them while you're out of combat so you can attack crystals without having to use your enchant points or an important cooldown such as your power. I do acknowledge that he is actually a very strong character, which is why I said that is probably a me issue. And I also acknowledge that he is definitely stronger in multiplayer. I do want to do a specific multiplayer tier list, but for now, for my own personal purposes, I will be putting him in D tier. Up next, this is the starkest difference between the first tier list and uh, this one, but I have Beowulf in C tier. And I don't know what happened. I genuinely don't know what switched with me. If it was just the general changes didn't favor me and how I play Beowulf or what, because I really liked him in the previous update. I thought he was really fun. I thought you could just do whatever. And now I feel like whether it's a mindset thing or whether it's the balance of the character, he's just taking a nosedive for me. It's kind of like a stone wall where I feel like I'm just running into it over and over again with no success. No matter how I try to change my approach, no matter, you know, which ability I empower, no matter which strategy I employ, no matter which items I go for, it just feels like nothing really works for me with this character. But at the very least, the reason why I'm putting him above Aladdin is because he is a little more fun to play, in my opinion. I'd say the biggest thing that has countered me with Beowulf is the third boss fight. And I think that, you know, to be fair to myself and to be fair to the character, this will probably change with time as I learn the fight better. You know, I will probably, probably have a better time of fighting that final boss and start getting more wins with the character. But as of right now, I can't really justify putting him higher than C tier based on the experiences I've had with him after the update. Like I kind of alluded to, I find it hard to find a build path that is actually good for him. Like, sometimes you get in the build and you're like, oh, this will be good, and then you just feel kind of weak still. I don't know what exactly it is, but I might try doing some more generic builds like uh, Horn of Plenty plus Ogre Blood and see if that helps me get a better idea of how to play the character when I have a strong blanket build, you know, something that's good on everyone. Another reason why I rate him so lowly, and it's a small reason, but I do genuinely believe that he has literally the worst talent in the entire game, which is the one that makes you spin longer. I can't remember it, but I'll put it on screen here. Literally garbage. You just arrest control and have to spin like a dumbass for five seconds now. It sucks. Worst. Up next, I have Geppetto. And I think Geppetto was quite low on my last tier list. And while I don't enjoy him as much as the other characters, I have come to appreciate him a little bit. And he was one of the he's one of the characters that I've won with all the talents on. So I have to give him some credit for, you know, having that 
achievement, whereas, you know, Beowulf and Aladdin don't. The worst part for me is that in Nightmare Difficulty specifically, he feels kind of bad, specifically with his dummies. They just feel like they get one-shot by pretty much everything, uh, and it's kind of obnoxious. Part of that is a skill issue, I would say. Like, you just kind of get better at placing your dummies and making them be more useful. But overall, I can't really say that I particularly enjoy him compared to the other characters, and I don't think he's particularly strong, except in some extreme scenarios where any character would be strong. Now, this is where this list gets a little interesting. Up next, I have Scarlet, and I'm not going to be putting her in B tier. I'm going to be putting her in A tier, and I know she's going to be lower, so I'm just going to keep her down here. It does kind of feel weird to have her in the lower half, but still, even after the updates, even though it's got a little better, I really don't like her human form still. The wolf form, if it was separate, I think the wolf form would be in S tier, and the human form would maybe be down in B tier, but averaging those two different play styles and kits out, I get this. Scarlet in A tier. Some of the mechanical issues that I had before, such as pressing shift while an attack is still happening and getting removed from your invisibility, are less of an issue now, but it is still kind of annoying sometimes. And like I mentioned with Aladdin, I do think Scarlet is actually stronger in multiplayer because she has the Ashes ult that lets you revive allies for free, essentially. So there is some credit to be given there, but not for a single player experience, which is what I'm talking about. Don't get me wrong, though. Scarlet with Adrenaline and with the Daggers does feel much better than she did before the update. So I do want to give that a mention so that you guys don't feel like I'm giving her the short end of the stick. I mean, she's an A tier. Let's be let's be clear here. She is like a good character. I just really don't enjoy playing the human form as much. So now, if there's any character that has aged like a fine wine for me personally, it's Sun Wukong. Similar to Beowulf with his downward trend, Sun Wukong has had a massive upward trend for me, where I actually quite enjoy playing him now. Obviously, the risk and the reward is still there. It's a little hard to get used to his block, especially when there's a lot of enemies coming in, and especially in multiplayer. I think he's probably the one character that I would put lower in multiplayer, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I have gotten better with his block, I've gotten better with using his power at a more appropriate time. All of these things have led me to enjoy Sun Wukong more, and I think I mentioned in the last tier list that it was kind of skill-based, the reason why I didn't really enjoy playing him. Now that I'm better at the character, I can really appreciate some aspects to him more. He has incredible power, and I'm not going to mention the Transfiguration attack speed glitch too much because it is a glitch, and I, I assume it'll get patched out eventually, so that doesn't really have any bearing on the ranking of this character. But yeah, he's fun, he's good, it's just that his risk side of his character is a little too much for me to put him higher. Now I will say it's not entirely true for the sort of get good argument for this character because his shift is a little bullshit. Like, I'll just say it how it is. It's a little bullshit sometimes with enemies that you thought were going to hit you. Now you have to wait five seconds before you can block, which is pretty important, you know? Um, or with, you know, you mistimed it by 0.1 second. Oh, shit. Well, there were 20 attacks coming in. How could I know when this attack was going to hit me? I don't want anyone to feel bad because they haven't gotten the block thing down, but me personally, when I figured out how to use the block more effectively, it felt a lot better. Technically, there's no drop here. She's still in third place, but in terms of tier, I'm knocking Snow Queen down to A tier. The main reason for this, purely personal, I just didn't have much success on her up until recently. I could still see her strength, even though I was losing a lot with Snow Queen, but I don't know, it's just the weakness of being too squishy is a real issue with Snow Queen, and there isn't really anything in her kit or in her talents that helps it. Aside from, you know, maybe getting more defense charges, maybe, and some items can help, but even getting, like, stacking a ton of health, it does not really help with Snow Queen. Also, there's not a single thing in her talents that gives her any healing, you have to get it from other sources. No, not a single talent you get will help with that. Uh, you can only get shielding, which there's two of them, I believe. The trait shield and 
the defense shield. So overall, survivability is a real issue, but her power is pretty much unparalleled. I feel like she's one of the strongest characters, and she's my go-to character for speedrunning, for example. Um, if I want to do a run quickly, I go to Snow Queen. Another thing that is an issue on top of her being squishy is the fact that she is locked down during two of her big abilities, her M2 or power and her E or her special. Those two pretty much lock you in place. Your power knocks you back and I have died a couple times from getting knocked back by my own power into a strong enemy attack, which does feel bad. But overall, I think she's a very strong character, so she's going to be at the top of A tier for me. And now this is the probably the biggest surprise of the video, aside from maybe Aladdin, but Pied Piper is in S tier for me. And this has been something that has been building up for a while, where I've just enjoyed him more and more and more and more with every single run. Uh, he is just a lot of fun to play, more than anything. He's not particularly strong, I acknowledge that, and maybe the only reason why he hasn't jumped up to my number one spot is his early game is pretty weak. But if you can survive the first three levels, you kind of run away with it usually. Almost every single run, you get at least one thing that is like propelling you up into you know, a higher tier of gameplay, where you're just becoming extremely strong. But to me, that is his only issue, is the early game, so... Having him in S tier is kind of a no-brainer. I feel like all of his starting talents are extremely good, which is another plus. And in practice, he kind of becomes godlike in a lot of scenarios. Now, on paper, you kind of assume that he's weak, but a lot of his upgrades for his talents, for his abilities, they're just really strong. Specifically, his special build and his power build are just insanely good. I think the rat build is probably the weakest of them, but that's another thing, is that I feel like he has the most well-defined builds out of any other character, and also some decent overlap where you get a talent that isn't necessarily a part of his build, but it still helps a lot because his, his kit is just well-made. Not to say that other kits aren't well-made, but it just feels like there's so much more um, balance between his talents, like all of them are useful, essentially or almost all of them. I can't think of a single bad talent on Pied Piper. All of them feel like they increase your power significantly, so. Another big thing for him is his AoE vulnerability, which no one else can do initially. Technically, Aladdin can do an AoE vulnerability. You can hit more than one target with your jump, but it's kind of hard to do, and... It's kind of hard to get consistently, I would say. Te okay, okay. Technically, Scarlet does also have an AoE vulnerability, and Sun Wukong has an AoE vulnerability. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yes, a lot of these characters do, and, you know, now that I'm looking at it, the ones where it's hardest to get an AoE vulnerability are my lowest rated characters. Like, Geppetto has none, Beowulf has none, and, like I said, Aladdin's is kind of hard to pull off on multiple characters. Obviously, I have other issues with Aladdin, but that is a trend that my lowest rated characters are just generally the hardest to get vulnerability on. They basically need Ring of Dispel for these two, and then Aladdin, obviously, has a pretty decent one for single target. Obviously, the very last one here is going to be Melusine. Melusine has been my favorite character for a while now. I really enjoy just how she plays. I don't mind that she's locked into a single spot, and I'm really happy that they changed uh, the dance step to C step, or however they changed it. The last one was you can dash during your attack, and it was just useless. It was actually like a nerf, honestly. Before that was changed, it was definitely the worst ability in the game, instead of Beowulf's spin. But now that they've changed it, I feel like it's probably one of the best starting talents. My only issue, I would say, with Melusine that I'm starting to feel a lot more recently is that not a lot of her talents are very good offensively. Deep Beat is the only offensive one in general, and it doesn't really do much in the way of damage. I mean, it's an AoE, and it's, you know, pretty wide, but it's once every four attacks, and sometimes you can't get four attacks off. But overall, I think, you know, everything about Melusine is good aside from her starting talents. Her kit is extremely good. There are only a couple talents that I would say, you know, are particularly not useless, but not as helpful, especially as a, you know, non 
offensive character with her starting talents. You know, you have shimmering scales and you have like soothing presence, but it's hard to get the two of them together on accident. You know, it's hard to get it on purpose, but it's hard to get it on with no other choice. You know, most of their other talents, aside from her starting talents, are offensive. Also, I will say that her two ultis, I haven't talked about ultis at all with any of these characters, but her two ultis are the strongest in the game, just straight up. I mean, both of them are extremely good. The Wisps, I think, is probably the worst between the two. But the water bubble, whatever the hell it's called, the big fucking bubble that she drops down, she throws it back and all that. That shit is so good, especially because you don't have to channel it for full damage. I initially played this character with the assumption that you did have to channel it all the way to get maximum damage. But no, you can just like go up and come immediately back down. And it does the same damage as if you, you know, let it run its full duration. I guess I did talk about Scarlet's ulti. Um, real quick, just as a sum summary, uh, Aladdin's two ultis, the magic carpet is really good. Probably, like, top five ultis in the game, in my opinion. But his other one is only useful, in my opinion, in multiplayer, one. And two, if you have Hope Diamond. And Hope Diamond is a different conversation, honestly. Uh, Beowulf, I feel like his dragon ulti is the second worst in the game, above Aladdin's wish ulti. But the raging warrior, the raging gamer, that one is uh, pretty good. It's strong. It does a lot of stagger and a good amount of damage. Uh, it's just that I've, I've kind of suicided on it a couple times, so that sucks. But actually, you know what? I think... The Dragon ulti is better than Snow Queen's Ice Beam ulti, Freezing Ray. Uh, that one, it's just really bad because it doesn't do a lot of damage, and you're completely locked in place for like 5 seconds. It's pretty ass. Another pretty bad one is Pied Piper's Rat Swarm or whatever the fuck. That one is not good at all because you're kind of locked in place again. But at least that one has a wider AoE and does a lot of stagger damage. I think both of Geppetto's are pretty good. That's probably like one of his shining qualities is both of his ultis. Scarlet, all four of their ultis are pretty good. Eating the enemies is probably the worst one because you lose the XP for using it on an enemy. But if you don't care about that, then it's nice to get rid of like a corrupted phoenix or something like that uh the gun is good the billowing breath is pretty good mostly like even though you do lock yourself in place it is a lot of stagger and a lot of damage and it's a big cone so uh then the last one the ashes one i said it's good in multiplayer but it's also very good in single player so i'll give it credit there sun wukong's ultis both extremely good honestly the, the monkey clones very nice for drawing aggro, getting some quick healing, or just like bursting an enemy straight up. Very, very nice stuff. And then Transfiguration, aside from the glitch aspect of it, is actually really good because you put yourself in a situation where you have all standard abilities and they're all at epic tier, so you're just doing massive damage when you ulti for 20 seconds. Uh, I feel like the I'll probably do a video about, or like a tier list video about which characters are the best and worst to turn into as Sun Wukong. But I'll tell you right now, I feel like Geppetto's the worst. His ultis are very good. Snow Queens, I did mention her freezing ray is bad, but the blizzard is quite nice. It just does, you know, very consistent damage and it helps you with the rest of your kit. You can do rotations while it's going off. So I like the blizzard quite a lot. And then Pied Piper, his musical notes and shit like that, you know, that I, th I like that ulti quite a lot, actually. Even though it doesn't do a lot of damage, it's pretty nice to just kind of, like, go around all fucking happy and shit or whatever. <laughs> just having a little little bit of a fun time, you know? It's more of a vibes ulti than a damage ulti, you know? But yeah, just aside from that little tirade, that's my full tier list. Let me know what you agree with or disagree with. Try to keep it civil. Like I said, this is subjective. And I fully expect people to have completely different tier lists. Maybe you have Aladdin in S tier and Mellow Sign in D tier or Pied Piper in D tier. I don't care. It's fine. You know? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry it took so long to get out, but it's here now. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.